Hello guys, the random music of you were here. Now, interestingly, I'm going to read some verses. Now, these come from the biblical story bullet in the Bible. Let me uh, read you them. Here are the verses. Music produced by Rob Cavallo and Green Day. Engineered by Doug McKean. Directed by Samuel Bayer. Producer Tom Lynch. Executive producers Pat Germa, Kim Dorlea. Uh, videographer, additional filming Chris Dolgan. Associate producers Tom Whaley. Peter Sandrius. Devin Sarno. Head editor Tom Roy's production company RSA USA Black Dog Films recorded at the National Bowl Milton Keynes Remote Truck Lee Voyager 2 Head Sound Assistant Rain Ways Sound Assistants Oliver Nuz Deliverson Produced Mixed by Chris Lord Al Jed Ransom and Music Burbank California Head Assistant Engineer Dharma Kajanak Assistant Engineer Keith Armstrong Music edited in John Van Ness, mastered by Kid Jensen at Sterling Sound, New York, New York, New York. Additional musicians, Jason White, guitar, background vocals, Jason Freeze, guitar, keyboards, horns, background vocals, Ron Blake, horns, percussion, background vocals, Mike Puno, guitar, background vocals, tour assistant, accountant, Doug Goodman, tour coordinator, Bill Schneider, Production manager Greg Dean, stage manager Brian Kearns, FOH and engineer Kevin Lerman, line design just Lays Over Tech, and of course seven is um management Pat Mega FC, Pat Jen Menu Design, Chris Wigler and photography Wayne Brands. How long have I been talking about? I'm sorry. This actually isn't right. What I meant to say is these are things that are the liner. I was reading the liner notes to a Green Day album this whole time. Oh, I was. Yeah. I'm sorry to leave you on the hold and pretend I was reading some Bible verses. Besides, look, do those verses sound like something you'd hear in the Bible? Huh. No, 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 no. Well, anyways, hi guys, it's me, the Ranting Music Reviewer here. And this time we're reviewing Green Day's own Bullet in the Bible. This year was released in 2005, a year after the smash hit American Idiot. An album that I find is pretty overrated, but you know, it's alright. They embarked on a large tour because, and they had high attendance, specifically at this concert, which became Bullet in the Bible. So yeah, let's review it. Uh, it was their first live album, and they also released another one. Let's just talk about this. The cover is actually awesome. There it is, bring a bullet in the Bible. DVD, parental advisory. Well, you know, no, I don't like the parental advisory. But, um, yeah. The, the name is awesome. Bullet in a Bible. That just, I don't like it. The back here, um, is this. It has the track listing, some images of them, the land, the barcode, and the technical crap. FBI anti-piracy warning. <laughs> Whatever. This is actually a slipcase. The real cover is this. And that's the real back. It's the real track listing, but that's a... See, you may have noticed when I showed you this here, a list of Bible verses. There was this bullet. Get it? That's why they list, made this look like a a Bible versus bullet in a Bible. This is actually kind of cool. So, what is kind of cool is it also has this DVD. Um, the DVD... Now, you wouldn't think that I actually have a way to watch this DVD, but... I do. But not for now. We're just gonna review the album itself. Yeah, here it is. A review of Bullet in a Bible. Alright, the opener is American Idiot. This is a classic, this is a very popular song, and I don't know, it's alright. I mean, I never said the version here was any better than the studio version. They're both okay, but definitely not my favorite on that album, but I don't really have a favorite on that album. being completely honest because i really don't know what i think of it all right but actually i think i do know what my favorite is the next song on here is in 
awesome song that actually influenced the uh, album's name, Jesus of Suburbia. I mean, that's an awesome song. It's It was meant to be the bo the Bohemian Rhapsody of a new generation, and I'd say overall, Billy Joe Armstrong does succeed. I mean, that opening is enough to get you excited. I'm the son of Raging Love. The Jesus of Suburbia, the, the love, none of the above. Uh, transitions are so flawless it's almost like one whole song despite the fact that it's actually five movements i will say one thing though i was able to just tell him and what my least favorite one was dearly beloved sounds like garbage and uh this issue uh, continues on wake me up when september ends but we'll, we'll get to that later all right holiday now this is a song I never had much opinions of it. It's just alright. Let's skip. Now, are we the wait? Wait. So it's usually Boulevard and Broken Dreams on the album, but this is the live album, not the studio album. If it was the studio album, I'd just listen to American Idiot. This is an album, a live album, not the studio one. All right. Are we the waiting? No, it's actually another one of my favorites. I mean, the, the sound was always interesting. It sounded slow moving and like. Starry night, a city of light. Yeah, nice. And then it goes into St. Jimmy, um, which is, of course, the introduction of the character St. Jimmy. <laughs> Jamie's coming down across the alleyway. It's another really operatic punk song, which I'll be honest, it's one of the better things about American Idiot. Even though I blame it severely for the state that the band was left in. Uno dos and Trey. But I don't have that, so because if I did, I'd review it and I would break him. All right, Longview. Now this is a classic song. You know, it was their first single from Dookie, but not the album, that made, the one that made them a household name. That was that was clearly, clearly Basket Case. All right. Now it's all right. It just feels it. Just kind of feel when I listen to it. It feels like it's a bit too edgy. Something like that. All right. Kitchen all right. Now this is an awesome song. Oh wait, I just remembered something. I'm reviewing the album. The live versions are just okay. That's all I can say. I kind of like the live version of Jesus Suburbia, but other than that, they're just okay. So, Brain Stew, now. This is an awesome song, and the live version... I don't know, it's alright. I have a story to share. So, I remember this one time when there may have been this, like, there was this song up here. It was called Song 7 by Tachi Station. So, I listened to it, and it sounded a lot like Brain Stew. It was a Brain Stew wannabe, so... Apparently, there was, like, some lawsuit going on, and it didn't go through because it's 2020. The live version is fine. The, the, the studio version is really good, though. Basket case. It's okay. I said that basket case was okay. Am I still allowed to live in this town? Am I not banned for life from living here? All right. Cut the crap and move on. Wait, wait, kin for a day slash shout. I didn't. Want, I hate kin for a day. It's one of my least favorite Green Day songs. And shout. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't care. It's too long. It's. I believe actually, it's one of the longest ones along with Jesus of Suburbia. Whatever. Wake me up when September ends. The problem I had with the original is those happy sounding things to make some more happy, but it's actually about dark subject matter. So I personally liked the version that he did for that album. It's like the 
2020 album where people at home were like, when World did something, I, I forgot. Right. Minority. I've kind of grown this one. When I, I see, you remember when I was doing that in my uh, Father of All video? Where it was like. I'm gonna be the minority. Well, the version he does here is alright. Uh, not my favorite, but they were worse. Boulevard of Broken Dreams finally comes back. And it feels a bit off not hearing the. That the part they came from the guitar feedback of Holiday because it was originally combined into one song, but I don't know. It kind of feels odd without it, and I wasn't that big of a huge fan of it. Uh, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life. Now I like this song, and the version he does here, I don't really care either way. Nah. Oh yeah, you might be wondering. What do I think of the DVD? Well, okay, the album is alright. The album is, is fine, I guess. But you might be like, oh, no, no, no. What is my opinion on the DVD? Don't buy the DVD and CD combo set just, for the, just because it also has the DVD. The DVD isn't worth it. Pretty much the DVD is just the album, but with the visuals. So some songs get uh, more drawn out, but that just makes them worse because you're hearing a more drawn out version of the songs. Like on Brain Stew, that one felt like it was going on for forever. Or, uh, and um, yeah, overall, it's not really worth it. In the, in the case of, for some reason on these, they have this extra story. The extra story to me is personally useless and doesn't have any real reason to be there, or at least this extra, like, clips. These clips aren't supposed to be here. I only put, put the DVD in just because I wanted to Green Day, not Green Day interviews. If I did that, I'd just look up Green Day interviews on the internet, and then, bam, I'm watching a Green Day interview where they discover why they did Father of All. Or something like that. Yeah. You literally could do anything else besides watch this. So, yeah. The DVD on here was really pointless. It's not worth buying. I will not be the random movie reviewer just so I can review the DVD that comes in here because it's not worth it. It's all I, my, all my flaws with the stuff on the, the that's played is literally my opinions on the album. So yeah, there's not much of a point to buy the DVD. I'd recommend. Don't buy this with the DVD, don't buy the individual DVD, just buy the album itself, if anything, and I'm not that keen on buying it. Yeah, to conclude today's show, to conclude today's show, to conclude today's show, I never thought I'd say this, but to conclude today's show, Bullet in a Bible is not that good. Oh, it actually felt way better saying Bull in the Bible's not that good than I thought I would. I don't know. Yeah, but anyways, I'm not that much of somebody who would recommend you want you listen to Bull in the Bible or watch Bull in the Bible. But it's still worth a listen or something like that. Just, it's not all that great. And it's not something I'd recommend as one of the uh, green albums you should buy. Something like Insomniac. Buy Insomniac. That's a cool album. But, you know, this has its merits, but I've heard much better, but I've also heard stuff like At Butacon or Hard Rain, so I've definitely heard much worse.